This is an I Am Listening exclusive podcast. Enjoy being you and don't put on the front. Don't hang around with people that aren't your type of people and just enjoy other people as well, which is what I do completely. You know, I really enjoy different types of people now, which is important because you get a different perspective in life. You are listening to the Don't Be a Stranger podcast. On each episode, I'll be travelling across the UK to interview members of the general public anonymously on various topics that crop up in all of our lives. Psychological studies have even suggested that when in conversation with a stranger, they can actually reveal more information than to someone in their own social circle. So whilst I traipse across the UK in locations such as parks, cafes, seasides and high streets, you can sit back, relax and listen to the tales and perspectives of the members of our general public. In the last decade, mental health has become a topic of focus. However, with recent studies revealing that one in four people in the United Kingdom will experience a mental health problem each year, we clearly still have a lot more talking to do. Although the government, NHS, charities, influencers and so many other organisations have been working on kicking down the barriers associated with men's mental health, Unfortunately, 40% of men in certain areas in the UK have never spoken to anyone about their mental health. So why is it that there is so much talk online about mental health, but for some, so little talking happening in real life? But how would you respond if you were approached by a stranger and asked to open up about your mental health? That's exactly what happened on this first interview. I heard from two ladies who had just stepped off a flight from the US I was in London's Borough Market where they shared their shockingly similar experiences of grief. Where are you guys from, if you don't mind me asking? I'm from Bountiful, Utah, in America. And I'm from Logan, Utah. Do you find mental health something easy to talk about? Yes. You do? Yes. And same to you? Yes. Have you always been like that? I think so. Yeah. 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 Do you know anyone that does find it difficult to talk about it at all? Men. I men. think men have issue with it. Yes. Yeah. Women are more susceptible or okay with it. Yeah. You've said that you think there's a stigma with men. Why do you think that is? Just because I know my husband and my son both suffer from anxiety and they will not admit to it. They will not take any medication. They will not see anyone for it because they're men. You know, they're really difficult situation with what you do with that right what advice would you give to your son when he's not accepting help or advice I just think if he would just try you know to go get some help or take some medication life would be so much better why struggle through life we don't need to you know everyone's built differently we all have different chemical imbalances and if there's something to help why not you know why am I Life's too precious, too short. If you've ever had mental health issues yourself, what do you do to make yourself feel better? Nature's the best medicine. Pop in a podcast in your earballs and go for a hike. For me, uh, to get out of the house, sun. Sun is the best medicine too. Yeah, Yeah. nature. Makes you happy. Where you live, do you think it would be difficult to access help? I think it's easy, it's easy to do like a 1-800 number and get something like that, but to get in to see a good psychiatrist or to get good help like that that you can't because they're they're you know months out and so and when you need help you need it right away not not three months from now yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if i and if i um if i had my way i'd donate all of my tax dollars to getting our mental health under control every bit bit of it instead of sending it around the world or whatever it needs to come home and help us with our mental health If you had one piece of advice that you wish you could tell your younger self, what would you tell that person? Life's too short. Uh, Enjoy each day. Go travel. That's what I like to do, to travel. There's so much to see in the world, so many people to meet, so many things to do, not to waste time. Mine is nothing lasts forever. Enjoy the journey. We have both lost a daughter. Gosh. In the last few years, and so we both find ways to we both know what enjoy the journey. Life, what life means, yeah, yeah. Find wow, purpose and meaning. Is that how you two are friends? Is or you knew each other before, before that? We're oh yeah. I can't believe it's happened to both of you. Each that there's lives for a reason, you know. God pits us 
where we need to be. Yeah, I definitely think people do cross paths for a reason. Like you two were meant to meet. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yes. Our families were friends since our yeah. kids were little, and for us to both lose our daughters is just yeah. What advice would you give to someone that is going through that trauma right now, who's just lost someone? What would you say to them? Time, time is is all there is to help. You know, it never goes away. It just I call it. Uh, you just get longer periods of time that you forget, um, but it you never it never goes away. I would say love never dies, and you just need to find new ways to see that they're still a part of us, of our journey. So, yes. they show us daily. Yeah. Yeah. in different ways that All they're the that they're with us. Yeah. Don't be so caught up in grief that you miss those beautiful signs from yeah. heaven that they really are near. Because they wouldn't want you to be doing that. They wouldn't want you to be sitting around moping. They would want you to be getting up like you're doing, dressing in your bright colours, <laughs> your lipsticks matching your friend's coat, and that is what they would want you to be doing. Yeah, That's definitely. Fun. You're darling. <laughs> Thank you. Podcast. I did find these ladies very inspiring because it's clear that they've been through a lot of traumas in their lives, but somehow they're still managing to spread a positive message. And another thing that I thought after this interview was I said to my brother, because he came with me this day in London, I said to Elliot, if I had just got off a night flight from the US and it's 10 a.m., can we bear in mind, there is no chance I would have my makeup on, a nice little outfit looking really put together. I would be fast asleep in my hotel room, but maybe that just highlights the difference between Americans and Brits. Or maybe it's just me being lazy, I'm not sure. But they also did touch upon a stigma within men's mental health, which moves us on to the next stranger that you are about to listen to. This man was shopping in Brighton and he highlighted to me how he actively lives a life against this stigma. Do you find it easy or difficult to talk about your own mental health? Uh, personally, yes, I do. Uh, mostly because of the support network around me. So you find it easy too? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Have you always been like that? No, um, I think there's been more awareness raised about mental health in recent years. Yeah. Um, the people that I surround myself with are also quite, I think open about talking about their own mental health which yeah. also helps me engage myself so if there was a time before there was more awareness about it, when you mean that do you mean do you think there was more like a stigma in men speaking about their mental health or just mental health in general also particularly men there was a stigma um it's always that uh there's a very stereotypical view that men need to keep their feelings to themselves um i think in the past few years it has changed and we're allowed to be a bit more open now it's more yeah. expected that we should be actually um, do you have like male friends that you talk about mental health do comfortably or is it sort of like a topic in your own friendship group that you avoid or not avoid or you just don't really discuss um we actually talk about it quite a lot yeah, um good. i think i'm at an age now where we've all gone through stuff various traumas in our lives and you realize you have to open up about that um particularly when you have a friend where you're going through different things but at the same time you find you there's some solace in opening up about your issues which helps them open up in return has there been, say, if you've gone through a trauma, has there been any advice that really stuck with you that a friend's given you or someone's given you? Um, it really is just to be open and talk through, yeah. and talk through the issues that you're currently feeling. Um, your feelings aren't invalid. Um, that you're, you have the right to feel how you feel at the time um, and just be prepared to engage with other people about that and have them not necessarily impose their opinions upon you, but um, be prepared to listen to their advice. Yeah you had one thing that you could tell the younger version of yourself that you wish you knew sooner what would it be um everything you're going through is temporary um things always get better um and this just helps you grow yeah. um, very cliche isn't it no, it's but not it's not no one's actually said that today so if that makes you feel any better it's not very cliche i think sometimes it's quite hard to try and this is also cliche see the light at the end of the tunnel but what you're right it's everything is temporary and like life can be so up and down so quickly and maybe that's just like the magic in it this next interview took place in greenwich market and let's just say that this stranger was raised in a time very different to what you may know today do you find mental health something easy to talk about? No, I don't. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there's all the stigma attached to it and uh, something that uh, people 
I try and brush under the table. I try to come to the carpet out the way. I'm in my seventies now. Well, well, it was something that wasn't even mentioned. You know, it was it was that, that person across the road sort of business. Then, so it's definitely more open now. Why do you think it wasn't really spoken about before? Can you think of a reason why? No, I, I I think it was it was looked down upon because and it was it was a fault in your genes or family or whatever, and it was never ever mentioned. Whereas now, I guess it has been slightly more normal. Yeah, I think I think it's more out in the open now, isn't it? And uh, yeah, in the media and sort of uh, that sort of thing now. And I think people are more understanding now, and there's, there's more places that people uh, people can actually find help from. Is it something you can speak about with your friendship circle, with your family? Yeah, I think it is now. I mean, uh, uh, so we three or four generations of us now, and, and I think uh, that the young ones know more about it and more prepared to speak about it, and uh, it's more of an open forum now. I think. If you could give yourself one piece of advice uh, that you wish you knew sooner in life, this could be about anything, do you know what you would say to your younger self? Yeah, I'd certainly say speak to somebody about it and let's, let's, let's get out in the open and let's, let's, let's uh, enjoy yourself a bit more. It's such a simple message, but you're so right. What an absolute sweetheart. And even though he was raised in a society where mental health wasn't spoken about and almost shamed upon... He still adapted his views to the modern day and I'm here for it. Let's move over to the next interview with a stranger. For many business owners, the COVID pandemic caused businesses and shops to shut and some to never even reopen again. Let's hear from a stranger who somehow turned this awful situation into changing his life for the better. I'm doing this episode on mental health which is a bit of an interesting topic to be going up to strangers and asking. So do you find it easy or difficult to talk about your own mental health? Actually, fairly easy. You do? Yeah, because I'm, I've learnt to be myself, so it's actually something that I think is really important. So you said you've learnt to be like that. What sort of caused that change to make you be able to talk about it? I think ups and downs in life. Mm. I think when you start off when you're young, you just sort of progress and you, you just ambitious you do lots of things and then different things happen over the course of time and you realize it you know there's a lot you need to sort out and once you you actually get to that point you actually go yeah who's actually me and once you find start on that journey then you actually realize that you know you can find find yourself and talk to people and and be yourself yeah, yeah which is really important so is it something that you can easily talk if you felt like you were struggling you could reach out to friends and family about Oh, definitely, yeah. More friends, I think. I think family things are always quite awkward. Um, but yeah, definitely with friends, you know. And it is having a peer group and people that you relate to is, is important, yeah. Is there any reason why you... It's an interesting point you just said about family. It can feel kind of awkward. And I can kind of relate to that. Like, I always feel like I want to put on a front that everything's great. Why is that? Why do you think that is? I think it's just history because you're always the child and then you're yeah. different things and people don't understand the, the paths you take in life sometimes. So, yeah, it's, it, it, you can't really open up because they expect you to be the person that they brought up rather than the person that you yeah. really are. That's a good point. I hadn't actually thought about that, but I probably feel the same. Like I could go to my friends and even though I've got a great support network with my family... I always just want to put on this like facade that I'm doing great but yeah it's a good point so if you could give your younger self when you probably couldn't talk about things so openly some advice or a piece of like advice that you wish you knew sooner do you know what that would be I think it's enjoy being you and 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 don't put on the front don't hang around with people that aren't your type of people um and and just enjoy other people as well which is what I do completely you know I really enjoy different types of people now which is important because you get a different perspective in life you've touched upon like people and I'm guessing that's one way that it helps you with your mental health keeps you happy you're a people person how did you manage through covid when that was one thing that we were restricted in doing I actually moved to Brighton which because I always wanted to and I always had a reason not to um because I had a business where I was I had something set up and then it all closed so it gave me kind of a bit of freedom and I kind of found more my tribe of people here, you know. And I, I suppose I've been talking about moving to Brighton for like five years before I did it. And wow. you find that you do that. And suddenly I went, oh, I can move. Yeah. How much do you think location impacts someone's mental health or your own mental health? I think massively. I think, you know, when you're happy somewhere, you know, the simple things in life 
make you happy. You don't have to have lots of stuff. The main takeaway that I got from that interview was that you are always one decision away from a very different life. And for that stranger, he made a big, bold decision to change location and it improved his life. And I know that not everyone can make big decisions like that. But the point I'm trying to make is everyone can make little changes to their life, whatever that may be for you to elevate it and improve it. Let's move over to our next stranger. She lost her dad when she was 18 years old and she shares how she dealt with her grief in her own way. Do you find it difficult to talk about your own mental health or not? No. no. Have you always been like that? Only since I was probably about 24, 25. Right. My dad had died when I was oh eight. God. Yeah. So wow. learned very quickly to look after yourself. How have you learned how to do that? So like what things have you done to sort of make yourself get back to where you are now? I guess time for one. There's no time in grief. Grief hasn't got a time. It can come at any point at any time. Um, go and see psychiatrists, therapists. They didn't help. So, and there was nothing that was going to change that fact. Do you think it was the person, if you don't mind me asking, or, or you think if you went and saw someone else it would have been different? No, no. I don't think it would be any different. Yeah. And I think that because there's, there was no understanding to it, and there isn't any understanding, so... And there was just a lot of things that happened that I had to deal with and cope with my own way. But you've picked yourself up. And you can talk about it. Yeah, things that, listen, there's been so much happening in my life. Mm. You just learn to live with things. Yeah. And how do you manage to still have, like, a positive... Because you seem positive about it still, have a positive mindset. Because you still have to live your life. Even though you don't have the people or other things happening in your lives, you still got to live your life. Because mm. there's only a small amount of time. Yeah. If you could give your 18-year-old self... it was You were 18, did you say? If you could give your 18-year-old self a piece of advice with the knowledge that you've got now, what would you say to her? Don't block most of it out. I think it's quite easy to do that with grief. It's just to block it out and then you don't process it. And as you were saying with time, people say time's a healer, but you can block out the grief and the pain and then it comes back around the corner to haunt you, doesn't it? Anytime. So you'd say don't block it out. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. How often do you struggle to pick yourself up when things haven't really gone your way? Let's hear from a man whose work revolves around this important skill. So I'm interviewing people about mental health. Okay. Um, do you find it easy to talk about your own mental health? It's something that I've learned to deal with more recently. I started therapy and things like that. So yeah, yeah. So is that what sort of has helped you learn to talk about it or time or what, what has made you be able to talk about it? Um, I think that, yeah, starting therapy helps, definitely. Um, but then also, uh, just as you say, time. And also there being a more open conversation about mental health, yeah. 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 If you've had days where your mental health hasn't been great, what have you done to pick yourself up? Um, well, usually I would do something like go and talk to my girlfriend and she's always pretty great to talk to. Or, um, or just try and maintain a positive outlook. So yeah. look, look for things that make me smile, you know. So obviously um, the people that are listening right now don't know how I've met you. So what are you doing here today in Borough Market? Uh, I'm a busker. Um, so I've been performing, singing songs, playing in the market, which is one of the things that makes me happy and makes me smile. Um, and I'm here sort of fairly regularly, I'd say once a week. Um, Borough Market are very kind and let me come and play here quite regularly. So. What made you like pluck up the courage to come in and perform in front of people in the streets? in the markets yeah no I remember the first time I tried busking it was the most bizarre feeling because you set up all your stuff and you're like okay I'm just going to sing now and hope that people care or that they stop and listen um, but I had actually been a performer before I was a busker so I guess the thing that made me want to pluck up the courage to busk was finding a way to make money during the day yeah. <laughs> have you ever had days where it hasn't gone so where it has been very quiet definitely yeah and those days happen more regularly than I'd like to admit um, but uh, the good days outweigh the bad days, yeah. so it's worth it. And if you could, I feel like today's been a pretty good day from an outsider's view, but if you could give yourself advice when a day hasn't been so good, what would you tell yourself? 
Um, oh, well, perseverance. Um, so, for example, I started here today and, you know, it didn't really go very well for the first 30 minutes, you know, if we're talking financially. But then I stuck it out and played the full length of the set. I didn't let it get to me. I didn't let it move me on. Because I'll be honest, when a busker's playing, um, it does drive you when you see the money coming in. And we do do it because we love it. And I love singing songs. and I like seeing people smile and be happy. But it, it drives you a little bit. It's a little incentive. It's a sen yeah, incentivizes yeah. you. Uh, but when you don't have that, sometimes it's important to just keep going and remember that you're doing it because you love it. The last interview with a stranger on today's episode also took place in London's Borough Market. Now, I don't know about you, but I had personally never come across a part-time med student and part-time DJ. So let's hear what he had to say about mental health. Where are you from? I'm Lebanese. Lebanese? Oh, wow. Do you live in London? I do, yeah. You do? Yeah. How long have you lived here? Uh, nearing on five years oh, now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you do? I'm a med student okay. and a DJ. And a DJ? Oh, that's quite a cool little side hustle. Well, I think one day it's the side hustle will become the main hustle, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, you know, everyone has a passion and yeah. mine is definitely not medicine. No, okay. But uh, one day I'll be a DJ. One yeah. day. Properly. That's cool. Um, so this is, I'm going to switch the conversation up a bit, but I'm doing this episode on mental health. Okay. So do you find it easy to talk about your own mental health? Personally, yeah. I think uh, in my friend circles or whatever, I'm probably the mental health advocate, if you will. Yeah, uh, very open about it, pretty approachable to anyone to come have a conversation with me about it. Yeah, but I think other people are, it's kind of like a stigma, I guess. Um, but I think by and large these days, it's a pretty good awareness of everything so yeah. yeah do you think in your own friendship group some members of the group may find it difficult to talk about it um yeah i think so but they're usually the ones that haven't gone through anything yeah or not that i know of that uh has made them suffer with their mental health um yeah. but usually everyone's kind of gone through some sort of troubles in life and um by and large i think the people that i'm friends with are quite like emotionally aware and quite mature in that sense so yeah so, I'm going to ask quite an invasive question. How would you describe your own mental health? Uh, fluctuating. Um, but I think I like that. I'm typically quite a sensitive kind of guy, um, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I think it makes me very vulnerable and creative, and it lets me take risks that I otherwise wouldn't take. But it also can be very like lonely and very confusing. And um, Yeah, but I would say by and large, it's... Uh, it's a love-hate relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. How do you find location impacts your mental health? Because I went to Brighton okay. and I interviewed quite a lot of people in Brighton and a lot of them originally lived in London. Okay. And I guess some people love living in a big city and some people don't. And a couple of people that I met ended up moving to Brighton and their location really helped them. So sure. what's it like living in London? I've only lived out of London once, so I probably wouldn't be the best person to ask. But I love getting lost in this city. I feel like I could be anyone on any day and I wouldn't have the freedom to express myself how I would if I was not living here. Having said that, um, I've just come back from living in another part of the country and it was a lot quieter, a lot more relaxed and uh, the voices weren't quite as loud, if you will, right? The negative self-talk and that kind of yeah. thing. So um, I think location plays a big part of it. Yeah, but it's just about being aware. If you know that your location is impacting your mental health, it's just about changing things up, changing your environment not being afraid to do so, yeah. Definitely. And how much do you think like social media influences it? Does it help or hinder your mental health? It hurts it. Everyone will say that as well. Yeah. It massively hurts it. But um, it's addictive and it's meant to be addictive. And so it's kind of like, uh, I hate that I have to use it, but if I don't, if I don't have it, I won't be able to land gigs or get work yeah, or that kind of thing. for being a DJ yeah. is quite key. Yeah. Exactly. So I need, I need my social media if that makes sense but uh you know you compare yourself to everyone and uh, it's not obviously good to continuously do that day in day out um but yeah, yeah. love hit relationship again yeah, no, i'm definitely the same if you had a friend in your friendship group that was really struggling with their mental health what piece of advice would you give them i think everyone would usually say tell some about tell someone about it okay but i don't actually think that's the best really? source of advice no i think um what's helped me in my life is 
take time to be by yourself, okay? Because the way I see it, depression, anxiety, OCD, bipolar, whatever it may be, I think it's your body trying to tell you that you need deep rest, right? There's that clip of like, uh, I forget his name, Jim Carrey or whatever, saying depression is uh, deep, you need deep rest, right? And um, I massively believe that. For the longest time, I didn't understand why I felt this way, and it was just a, a feeling I couldn't quite wrap my head around. But the more you understand something, the less you fear it. And the less you fear something, the more you can seek to change it and understand it more. So I would say take time, yeah, yeah. to fully understand it. That's perfect. So if you had one thing that you wish you knew sooner, would that would be what you'd say? Or would it be something different? Like something you could tell your younger self? Would it be the same thing, um, to take time? It'd be take time and also don't sweat the little stuff because I promise you in a week's time you won't think about them. And even if you do, you know, hopefully you've understood them a little bit better and you can deal with them in a different way you know yeah, I think it's crazy how like one minute your life can be so rubbish and shit and then something can happen a conversation with someone and it can instantly yeah. change and uh, smile more that's what I would tell my younger self as well because it's easy to not and I think the more you smile the more you'll want to smile and the more others will want to smile and suddenly you find that your life is a hell of a lot better If you were affected by any of the issues in today's episode, then please head over to don'tbeastranger.co.uk for further information and help. That does mark the end of today's episode, but I'm hoping that if you've got this far, you've been refreshed to know that no matter what issue you've got in your life, whether it be tiny or huge in your head, there is always going to be someone that is willing to listen to you and talk about mental health. To see more content and advice from the strangers that I meet along the way, make sure to follow Don't Be A Stranger podcast on Instagram and TikTok and check out our website, don'tbeastranger.co.uk. Thank you all so much for listening and I'll catch you on next week's episode. This has been an I Am Listening original podcast. For more information, head over to our website at im-listening.co.uk. Listening.co.uk.